Hello, everybody. It's Father Bob Gross. Happy Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving Eve. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day. And we just had our ecumenical prayer service at St. Aloysius. We had Pastor Linda Thompson from the Methodist Church and Pastor Phil Olson from Kelmer Lutheran. And uh, it was really good to pray with them. And we had a pretty nice crowd. And we had a little reception after. I had the honor of preaching the message. And I just want to share that homily with all of you today as you enter into Thanksgiving. Hope you have a lot of turkey, but I most of all pray that you have hearts full of gratitude to God, who is the source of every good blessing. So here's the homily, a little message I gave. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we'll be with our family and friends. It's a day when our nation sets aside a day of Thanksgiving. We remember the pilgrims who came to this land. We remember the Native Americans who helped those pilgrims make it through their first winter in this land. Today we are thankful for the abundant crops that our land has yielded yet again. And putting the corn prices aside, the bounty of the crops was amazing. And it really is more important than the price. We pray that this crop is able to help the hungry find the basic necessities of life, food and water and shelter. I pray that we're a generous, a generous community and nation. For many of us, Thanksgiving is about a lot of eating, preparing for Christmas, maybe a bit of shopping, maybe some baking together, maybe watching football, maybe some sandlot football, maybe some card games. We actually slow down on Thanksgiving Day, maybe. Businesses are mostly closed. Most people are not working on Thanksgiving Day. But Thanksgiving, to who? To ourselves, to our families to the Lord. For us as followers of the triune God, we offer thanks to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This world is God's and we are stewards of this earth. We, are, we have to care for it. For all those who are created in his image and likeness, our brothers and sisters, we have to prepare it for the kingdom of Christ in which all of us long for, whether it be Catholic, Lutheran, or Methodist. That is one thing we can celebrate together and pray together. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Lord Jesus. Come is the last prayer of the Bible, if you remember. And the attitude and the virtue and the practice of thanksgiving, we are reminded of a great truth about our existence. And that is our dependency on God and on others. To be truly human means to be dependent on the Lord who created and redeemed us. That basic insight into the givenness of life is something that we need to be reminded of and reminded of often because there is a tendency in all of us to be self-sufficient. That's one virtue the Lord doesn't celebrate. Actually, Abraham Lincoln captured it when he made his Thanksgiving Day proclamation back in 1863 when he said, we have been recipients of the choicest bounties in and of heaven. We've been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We've grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom or virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we've become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Just think, Abraham Lincoln wrote that in the middle of the Civil War. Boy, Abraham, sounds, Abraham Lincoln sounds like an old-time preacher, doesn't he? Has your back straightened up? Mine has. But he does get at a basic point, doesn't he? There are things in life that we have no control over, and we have to give thanks for many of them. We must give thanks that God created us, and he sustains us at every moment. Just think all of our hearts are beating, all of our lungs are working, all of our minds and souls are working and moving, all of our feelings are being moved as well. Each of us is a mystery that God has made to show more of his great wisdom in each of our lives. That's not pie-in-the-sky theology, but rather the humble awareness that God gave us life, and we must be thankful for it. 
When we think about the most precious realities in life, they are all gift. Our families were given to us. We didn't choose them. We didn't choose them even though we wanted to sometimes. The talents and gifts that we were given to us were given to us and not acquired. The gift of faith found us in baptism, not us conjuring it up. All this gift. That's why the one leper who came back and was saved and wasn't merely healed. To be healed is one thing, to be saved is another. I truly believe that the deeper we go into the life of God, the more we are humbled by our littleness, our dependence upon the Lord. The trick that we sometimes get tricked into is that we have to provide for ourselves, go at life by ourselves, and pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. But in the spiritual life, God has done the heavy lifting. The great response of faith is to graciously accept it and to be thankful for it and to let that thankfulness pervade our lives. Does that mean that life is a cakewalk? We all know the answer to that. No. But gratitude truly puts us in the place of dependence and trust and leaning on the Lord, which makes us in turn open to others, which in turn leads us to the mystery of becoming the body of Christ. As we enter into, the, into Thanksgiving Day, our faith teaches us that on the worst day of our lives, there is still something we can be thankful for. That's why the book of Job captures this so starkly and so powerfully. Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When it is all said and done, what are you truly grateful for on your worst day? Thank God and live as never taking anything for granted. That's what it means to live the precious life of faith. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Help us to live the present moment so that we see you as, so we see you so as to thank you for your goodness. I want to conclude with my favorite prayer that really captures the attitude of gratitude, the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life, and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Friends, that's the attitude of gratitude. Let's live it generously for our brothers and sisters. As Forrest Gump would say, that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for listening. Please listen and share, and have a very happy Thanksgiving.